What's up, everyone? We are live at 5. It is Wednesday, October 16th. It's a rainy matinee day here in New York City. Two show day. I'm Paul Wontorek. I'm Beth Stevens. And we're joined by Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. Hello. And her jazz hands. Um, so, Beth, we have a fantastic guest today, one of our favorite human beings and Tony-nominated Broadway stars, uh, Miss Daphne Ruben Vega. Also, Tony say. Nominator, Daphne Ruben Vega. True. I see her at shows all the time. She She's very fancy. It all. fancy. She gets good seats. Yeah. Um, it's pouring rain out in yeah. New York City. It's stormy. Daphne's not here yet, but she'll be here any minute. Yeah. So here we're, here we're just going to start. I want to say, before we even start, that uh, the Lightning Thief is opening. So congratulations <gasps> Happy opening. to everyone over at the Longacre Theater. It's happening right now. It is raining on the red carpet a little bit, but um, little. I'm sure the party's inside and everything's going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be okay. Uh, so we're going to get to uh, Daphne and everything else, but first, today's top five. It's a new Broadway show, dearie. Oh, um, is that a Mrs. Doubtfire impersonation? Is that maybe. what we're doing? That's what, uh, uh, that's what she's so, doing. Yeah, this <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire musical, which everyone's buzzing about because people really love this Robin Williams Sally Fields movie. Uh, and of course, we knew Rob McClure was playing the part uh, originated by the late, great Robin Williams. And now we have learned that Jen Gambatis is playing uh, his ex wife. They're divorced, correct? Is that what's happening? It the is. The kids so trying to get the kids. The Sally dresses, Field role. The Sally Field role. He yes. dresses um, as a British maid. I, but they sent some a British. Nanny. Nanny. They've sent some British cookies to us, the production today. So thank you for those wafers. Delicious. Wafers. <laughs> biscuits. Um, biscuits. Uh, anyway, they're fantastic. Thank you. So now we know that um, Jen Gamatis is in it. Also, we know Brad Oscar is in it. Uh, Annalise Scarpac Scarpacci, mm -hmm. Jake Ryan Flynn, Jay Harrison G., Mark Evans, Charity Angel Dawson, Avery Sell, Peter Bartlett. A lot of wow. these people were in the recent readings. Um, and we also know that it's officially now opening on Broadway. It's already been announced for Seattle, and that's happening, I believe, starting in November. November 26th. At the Fifth Avenue Theater. December and now 29th. we know that it's going to the Sondheim. <gasps> what current, a beautiful current, place to go. Currently oh. the home of Beautiful. It's good. The Carol King musical. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it starts performances at the Sondheim. I like saying that on March 9th, 2020, and officially opens April 5th. So the best musical race is heating up. Yeah, it's on. Yes, and this stage star is going from the island to Gander. We're talking about Kanita R. Miller, the talented and wonderful Kanita R. G Miller. Gander is not an island, correct? You know, you guys It's have in Newfoundland. Newfoundland. I now know how to say Newfoundland. Newfoundland. Thank you. And when uh, Caitlin was talking about the island, she was talking about Once, Once on, this, on, on yes. this Island, uh, which is where Kanita Miller recently was, and her. now she's going to play the role of Hannah, which was originated by original cast member Q Smith. Yeah, she, she, she begins that's been at the whole run up till now. The whole run, yeah. and it's, it's been running for a while now. Uh, she will play her final performance on October 13th, and Ms. Miller will begin on October 15th. She's amazing. New You're stuff going on at The Rock, yes. And we got even more stars who are going to be heading to a funeral home for a musical. Everyone is super excited to see a musical in a funeral home. Creepy. I'm one of hey, them. I would see Once in a Silent in a funeral home, but luckily <laughs> we're seeing Fun Home in a funeral home. Okay. Um, it's where it takes place because it's about a family and the dad is an undertaker. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. It's in a funeral home. Uh, but it's not really about that, but it kind of is. It's up there. Um, so now we have learned that Will Swenson will play Bruce. Um, that is the father role that Michael Silvers played. And won a Tony Award. And won a Tony Award. I'm brought his second Tony. Uh, and Kate Baldwin will play his wife, correct? Helen, uh, the Judy Hune role. So mm -hmm. um, they're both fantastic and they're joining, who are they joining? It is Jen Colella. Uh, Kate, Caitlin Kinnanen, um, it's, it's, I'm assuming the cast is going to keep growing. Because Wait, where is this? Tell huh? us where, where is this going to be? It's on the Upper West Side. It's the Plaza Jewish Community Chapel Funeral Home. It's on December 19th. It's at 8 p.m. Uh, Danielle uh, Cagliano is directing, and Georgia Stitt is musical director. And we also learned some of the kids, Noel Hammond, Lennon, Nate Hammond, great name, Lennon, uh, and Pearson Salvador. They're going to dance around on coffins. So, um... <laughs> Fun, it's fun home. It's a it's a fantastic musical, and this it's you know it's it's funny because like everyone clearly wants to be in it, right? Yeah, of because course. they're all like we're in. Let's they do all want to sing at the funeral home. Yeah, so I'll be there. Yes, and we found out who's going to help bring some harmony to this off Broadway show. The long gestating harmony 
by Barry Manilow and Bill yes. Sussman. We first wrote about it. I looked it up. Guess which year, which year we first wrote about this? 2003. Musical. 2004. Oh, Very good. Wow. Very good. Close. It now has a director. We probably knew in 2003. We knew. We just we didn't. Hold we don't want to talk about it yet. <laughs> uh, Tony Winter Warren Carlyle will direct and choreograph Harmony. It will make its debut in New York at the Museum of Jewish Heritage. It begins February 11th and goes through March 29th and will open on March 4th. This has been going on for so long. I'm so glad that they found a home. Uh, listen to the creative team. This is newly announced creative team. Very fancy. Are you ready? Oh, yeah, I'm always ready for fancy. Always ready for fancy. Set designer Beowulf for it. Tony winning costume designer Linda Cho. Sound designer Dan Moses Schreier. And lighting designers, my favorite people, Jules Fisher and Peggy Eisenhower. Super but now you're one upping me, and I have to mention that oh. David Corrins, who designed this beautiful set, yes. is designing Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, well, that's important. <laughs> now that we're talking about designers, that's important to know. always have to throw Corrins a, a mention. Yes. So Harmony will be yes, in really New York happening. in the spring. And Warren Carlisle, you're in great hands with Warren Carlisle. Everyone's in great hands, is my phrase today. <laughs> Love the whole it. Thing. Yes, and we have some really exciting West Coast info to throw at you guys right now. Yes, so breaking news. You know, a breaking lot of news. things. A lot of things start in the West Coast and then come to Broadway. A lot of big Broadway hits started on the West Coast, and so the so the most pressing news that we just found out is Lempika, the musical that had a premiere at Williamstown last summer. They have now. It, it's by Matt Gould wrote the music, mm -hmm. and Carson Kreitzer wrote the book and lyrics, and Rachel Chavkin is directing. This is it got amazing reviews when they did it up at Williamstown, and there's been a lot of Broadway buzz. And we just got news that it will premiere in the spring at La Jolla Playhouse, and then they're saying it will come to Broadway in the 2021. They're calling season. it a pre-Broadway run. 2021 season. That okay, so that'll be the same away. Tony Rice as the Music Man, different categories. Anyway, mm. Lempika. It's 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 going to be fantastic. But I wanted to bring up the fact that I was actually in the West Coast. I thought La you were going to say you were in Lempika, but no. <laughs> no, no, no. But it's it's related news. I was in the West Coast um, this past weekend, and I saw two fantastic shows. And I just want to tell people you really should see them because time is. Time is running out. So the first one, I think it's very well documented that I love Little Shop of Horrors. To little, you. Little, little it's obsessed. been documented. We've discussed it. <laughs> a little obsessed with Little Shop of Horrors. And so they've been doing this production at Pasadena Playhouse, which actually closes on Sunday. So last chance, guys. And I think you can still probably squeeze out a ticket. Um, it is so good. Now, look, Little Shop of Horrors is opening off-Broadway tomorrow right? in sort of the classic staging of Little Shop of Horrors. Intentionally, they're doing it sort of in the classic uh, in the classic way. Michael Mayer is directing the new production, and that is fantastic. But it, what's really interesting is to see a show that you love, which is usually done in the same basic way, mm -hmm. totally stripped down and done in a completely different way. So how do they reimagine it? What's different? Well, first of all, the plant is hot pink. Oh. So... so so, I mean, you start with that, and Audrey you're like, too, well, this, got a is, makeover. this is very different. You walk into the theater, and the flower shop is like, it's very modern. It's like fluorescent, weird fluorescent lights. It's it's very, um, it just feels very modern. It feels very uh, sort of like in a weird part of town, which is, you know, which is what it is. Right. Good row. Uh, Dadu. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but we really have to talk about the stars. So, first of all, the director's name is uh, Mike Donahue. And, and George Salazar, who is playing um, Seymour, told me that Mike doesn't really, he's more of a play director. Oh, so, yeah. I think he kind of entered into the whole pro project with sort of a very fresh take on it. So, George and MJ Rodriguez, who we love, is playing Audrey. Yes. And she is so different than any Audrey I've ever seen. You know, obviously Ellen Green sort of created this stamp that that sort of started stamp the role. On it. Mm -hmm. MJ and George are both playing the roles so real, so honest, and it's it just it sort of has lost that. Um, I don't want to say cartoon because the original mm -hmm. is not a cartoon. Yeah. But it, but it, but when you play the characters just as very real people in the very beginning, it's kind of like, wait a minute, what's going to happen here? Where's the comedy going to come from? Where's what's the tone of this? But it totally works. They find their own comedy. The quirkiness is still there. The emotions are so heightened. It's beautiful. You know, you got to see George and MJ sing somewhere that's green on the Late Late Show. That was Thank so you, James good. Corden, for for documenting that. Mm -hmm. I wish he also. I wish we also got to see MJ sing somewhere that's green because another beautiful moment. The whole thing is a little more sci-fi. By mm -hmm. the way, the puppets are totally different. It's totally. Oh. It's just done very differently. Go see it if you're anywhere near Tell the West Coast. Tell us about Mushnick. Tell us about Amber Riley. Okay. Well, <gasps> I'm going to say Sean Coelty. 
created and and um, operates the puppets with a mm-hmm. team. Amber Riley is the fantastic star of Glee, and we saw her in Dreamgirls. So and good. she is uh, the voice of Audrey too. Kevin Chamberlain, Broadway's Kevin Chamberlain, is Mr. Mushnick, and he has a very clever... I'm going to give one thing away. In Act 2, when he's Mushnik suddenly has a lot of money, he has a little toupee, which I thought was a hilarious <laughs> touch. And Kevin said it came from his personal collection, Inside Info. And good Matthew Wilkes, who actually got his start off Broadway, but he's been on the West Coast, is so good as, as um, Orange Gravello DDS and all the other characters. So sick, so funny, so good. Dane Laffrey did the sets. They're really cool. And I also want to shout out, because you, you don't have a good little shot without great urchins, and Brittany Campbell, Tiquana Jones, Cheyenne Isabel Wells, Fantastic. I love this show so much. So I want to give it a proper shout out because it closes Sunday and I wish it would have some sort of future. But at the very least, I can't wait to see. I want MJ to do a big Broadway musical. I I want more MJ Rodriguez. Um, She hasn't been on Broadway yet. She she was in Rent. She was and, in Rent. And, and at City Center, but we need MJ on Broadway and George Salazar. Fantastic. Just just more. Just I I want to see more of them. And then on Sunday, I know I'm talking a lot, but we're also waiting for Daphne. Uh, on Sunday, I got to see Almost Famous, which is coming to Broadway, but Definitely. not officially. Not but official. Trust me, it's coming to Broadway. It's at the Old Globe Theater, the beautiful Old Globe Theater, where a lot of musicals have started. Um, Almost Famous, a lot of people know, is, based, is obviously the Cameron Crowe film, which is about his own teen years, writing for Rolling Stone and Cream Magazine and sort of getting into the whole rock and roll scene. Um, and... Tom Kipp has been working with Cameron Crowe. Cameron Crowe has actually written the book to the musical, Ooh. so it's very faithful to the movie, um, but it also adapted in really clever ways, and all the lyrics, and Tom Kitt wrote music and lyrics, so it's, it's been a real collaboration. Jeremy Herron, who is also not really a musical theater guy as far as we know. We know him from Noises Off. Noises Off, off the revival. He, yeah, the revival of Noises Off, the recent one. Um, he directs it beautifully. Lauren Lataro, really clever choreography. Um, hey, Casey Likes. I liked you. <laughs> Casey Likes is a super so talented so teenager good. who is playing William, and he is just fantastic in the show. Um, Colin Donnell and Drew Galing are sort of the lead members of Sweet Water. Um, That's the band. Yeah. Right? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, did that. I say it right? Sweet Water. Still Water. Still, Still Water. Okay. Still Water. Something Water. And they're totally unrecognizable in their costumes, by the way. Anika Larson's fantastic as the worried mom. Don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. Um, <laughs> uh, Rob Coletti is Lester Bangs, a part played by film teamer Hoffman. Anyway, mm-hmm. the whole cast is fantastic. It's definitely coming to Broadway. And I also have to mention Saleha Pfeiffer. <gasps> I finally got to experience Saleha Pfeiffer. She's Penny <laughs> Lane, and it is sort of the role. Yes. She did not disappoint. She is so incredible. Um, I finally got to meet her, and she's doing Evita. Evita! I like Evita, how you said that. Evita! To the center. Um, next. So anyway, there are no official plans for Almost Famous to come to Broadway, but trust me, it will. Unofficially, there are lots of plans. Yes. <laughs> and if you're in California, for anywhere near San Diego, you have until October 27th. And I highly recommend that you see it. So Thank anyway, that was my very call. long take wow. on um, the West Coast. And we have a fantastic <sighs> star in the room now. Hey, Beth, what else is on the site? Are we missing anything? Oh, I don't know. We were opening last night. Paper. You know what? Well, we haven't got it. Well, we have oh, a Rose Tattoo. There is, there is a show people episode. And Marissa Tomei opened in the Rose Tattoo. And we oh, got video yes. and, and photos Emilio of that. And Emilio Madrid took gorgeous, gorgeous portraits of the cast last night. Yes. Um, and who's on show people? Javier Munoz Woo! is on show people. And he is, uh, I really loved having him here. And he had a lot of, uh, can't wait to hear what you guys say. Wait, wait, until you guys see what he has to say about Twitter. Oh, because yes. <laughs> he's a lot on Twitter. But just let's hear him out. Hear him, hear him out. out. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Beth. Oh, thank you, Paul. I didn't do much Once here. Once Daphne's here, you got to go. <laughs> yeah, I got to get out of here. <laughs> Daphne Ruben Vegas in the broom. Yes. Hey, Caitlin, <gasps> tell everyone about today's guest. Gladly, yes. We got Miss Daphne Ruben Vega here with us in the studio today. She's here to, all, to talk all about season two of the Horror of Dolores Roach podcast that just dropped today. And we're going to talk about it's becoming a TV show. It was based on the play that she starred in. You guys know her. She was Tony nominated for her tones in Rent and Anna in the Tropics. She's also known for her screen credits, which include Smash, Hustling, 
and she's going to be in the In the Heights movie, and she's going to be in Katie Keene. She's a busy lady. We got a whole lot to talk about. Make sure you follow her on social media at Daphne Rubin Vega and leave all of your questions in the comments below. Everyone, please welcome Daphne and Paul. Thank you, Caitlin. Yay! Yes! Caitlin. There she is. Hello. Hi, Beth. The it's queen. raining out and there's traffic. Oh, right? my goodness. It's a mess. That's okay. You're always worth They're the They're claiming that there's explosions and the underground and Dolores. You know about the Drama. underground. It's Dolores. You went right into, you went right into your, uh, your... I was like, no, there are no explosions underground. I know this. <laughs> <laughs> because Dolores Roach knows all about underground. That's right. Uh, we're going to get to her. Okay. But first, I just want to say, yes. you look fantastic. Yes. Well, thank you. I saw you, actually, I saw you a few nights ago. You were at the Rose Tattoo. That's you were right. two rows. You had two rows better seats than me because you're a Tony nominator. <laughs> so that's where they put them. Wow. Um, wow. Put me on front But I appreciate you're street. not like, I, I could see over your head beautifully, <laughs> you know, because people can't see over mine. That's what they all say. Um, and you look fantastic. But right now, I'm loving the nails. You. Are great, and you, if they're you a just... souvenir from In the Heights because um, I started growing them for the film, and I haven't stopped. Wait, I they're actually... real. That's all real. Yes. <gasps> what? <laughs> I thought yes. they're drama. I know. I know. I thought you glued them on this morning. No, I did not. I did not. <laughs> no, I did not. And this what people can't see is that you're, you're wearing. Gel. Of course, Daphne Rubin Vega is going to have the most fabulous rain boots ever. You have hot pink rain boots on. Anyway, this just <laughs> you know I adore you. I do. Indeed, Thank you for I being do. here. Thank you for having me, Paul. So today's a moment because... You look wonderful, too. Thank you. I appreciate it. So uh, today's a moment because season two yes. of The Horror of Dolores Roach is whoop, out whoop. today, yeah. correct? So people can be listening to it right now. Um, how do you feel? How, how does it feel? To, this has been such an interesting part of your uh, career sure, now yeah. that this character has sort of turned into a, a thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been 2014. It's five years. Right. I mean, you know, I can't count, but yeah, five years. And yeah. so um, this is season two of the podcast. Um, it's really exciting to just sort of jump back into Dolores. Uh, there's been so much going on that today is actually the first day that I got to hear it. Um, oh, wow. Aaron Mark, who's the director and the writer, he was down to the wire and he took a plane to, he's in Kauai right now. Um, he, was at, he was at the Rose Tattoo with you, actually. He was at the Rose yeah, Tattoo, and okay. now he's in Kauai. So well, good for him. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I mean, he, last night he was in the studio just, like, finishing it up with um, our engineer, Armando, and um, the producers. Anyway, so it just was done. So I just, I have not heard it before. Wow. So it's kind of, you know, terrifying to think that something that, I'm producing hasn't been vetted to, uh, <laughs> right. to the degree that I would like. Yeah, but you're in good hands. I'm in such good hands, and yeah. I'm so excited. It's so scary. It's so it's deliciously scary. I love your I voice. Just, I, so love I love I love just like sort of living with your voice. It's yeah. fun. I mean, you have Thank such you. a distinctive voice. Yeah, Dolores has a very distinctive Dol voice. Dolores, yes. Yeah, she's a good storyteller. I mean, I, I got to say, it's like... I like this chick. She's scary. I, I would like. I would like to hang out with her. Um, you kind of do. I uh, I first hung out with her. She was an off Broadway, off Broadway show, Empanada Loca. Loca, yes. Uh, and you were so great in that. And so plot wise, mm -hmm. we're still kind of coming off of that, correct? Like what? Yeah. So the first season is like Sweeney Todd, yeah. in, in that you know I accidentally on purpose kill people, and <laughs> um, Bobby Cannavale <laughs> makes them into empanadas, and that just just goes. Tasty. Yeah, very very meaty, <laughs> and um, and so that sort of goes really wrong, and I have to blow up the shop, yeah. and escape. So I go underground. Right. And so I, um, in season two, I live under under the subway. Yeah, and that's tunnels. what that's where you were in Empanada Loca. It was actually taking place in the correct. In the she was it, telling her story. That's right. I right. was telling them from the subway. Right. So now I meet people like, like Leah Delaria. Yes, I know this cast. Yeah, Let, Dasha. Yeah, Amy Orlando, Ryan. Uh, Amy Ryan. Uh, Everett yeah. Quinton. Josh who, Hamilton. Yes. Alana Levine. Uh, yeah, I mean it's it's so Everett Quinton. Donnell Rollins. Yes, all of them. It's yes. so fun how podcasts have taken off and so many talents want to be a part of this like whole new thing, right? If any of us had predicted 10 years ago. It's a great way to tell a story. Yeah. Do you know, it's, it's a great way to just, um, the way we can conjure the way a character looks or an essence of a character when we read that is sort of greater than just having to see it. Mm. I think that happens when, when we listen. 
Mm. You know, we can sort of sure. build a character just mm -hmm. sonically. Yeah. So you recorded this when? Because you've been very busy. We have to talk about Carnaval, the body. So oh, right after Carnaval. <laughs> I wait, and, wait, by the way, Andrea Burns was here last week. Oh, and she's in the Rose Tattoo. I know. And she, she, she played the Daniela Rose on Broadway. I know. You're doing it in the movie. She was so lovely it's talking about it and talking about you. Yeah. Uh, which is so nice because, well, then, you know, people sort of immediately assume. I remember I had, I've had separate interviews with Chita and Rita. <laughs> right and the, the like you know and and sort of them talking about how hollywood sort of creates like weird energies or people assume weird things between actresses but that's not really it no doesn't i really love exist. andrea burns and i found it a huge honor to be able to you know um inhabit a character yeah. that she gave birth to absolutely yeah, yeah. but absolutely. Uh, so daniela let's talk about her because yeah. she's she's amazing hence the nails yes hence the nails <laughs> daniela because she's in the she's in the shop yeah and uh she and owns a salon up yes, you know the the, the political <laughs> spiritual this is the in the heights hub. movie was i clear that daphne yeah. is in the in the heights <laughs> movie which is Literally, one of the things I'm most excited about about 2020. And just to be that clear, and some political things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The horror of Dolores Roach, um, in the Heights, and this other show that I'm doing, they all take place pretty much in Washington Heights. Um, what happens is I'm underground in Dolores. Oh my God! Roach. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, That's so weird. Yeah, no, so the I'm, whole time you're, you're like Daniela, you're thinking, is Dolores under the store? You know, I'm not, you know, Daniela doesn't think about Dolores. No, that's true. She trusts doesn't. me. Um, <laughs> but, no me diga. Uh, no me diga. But um, actually, Dolores migrates further downtown. So, yeah. so I, I, I stand that corrected. That is where it all went down. It all went down. And what's the third thing you're talking about? Is that a secret? What's the third? It's not a secret. It's a TV show that will come out in February. Oh, the, 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 the Riverdale spinoff? Yes. Oh, okay, yeah. And so that's called what's that called? Katie Keene. Hey, yes. Wait, that's in that's in Washington Heights too. Well, no, I live in Washington Heights. In oh. the yeah, the, oh, cool. the girls actually live in Washington. That Heights. That is so funny. Oh, yeah. That, so it is sort of like your own base now. Yeah, you know, gentrification <laughs> runs deep in New York City. <laughs> So you have always back to gentrification, Always right? back to that. Well, yeah. it's a plot in the podcast, yes. right? And and now apparently in your career. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a running theme. It's in the tapestry of Daphne. Absolutely. So you have to fill me in a little bit on In the Heights. What was it like to actually film this movie? I saw some pictures of you on the street, I think. And yeah, I did. Like you filmed some stuff outside. Yeah. And there were paparazzi like taking pictures. So I got like a little, I'm like losing my mind about this movie. I love yeah. the show. What, you know, was it, what was it like to actually get to be, make a big movie musical like that? In New York City, first of all, New York City is the most photogenic city yeah. in the world. I don't care what anyone says, you know, with all due respect, Paris and, you know, all those other lovely places. But, you know, Washington Heights, it's like immediately there's love. There's just love everywhere. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again. It was like the best experience in my life. I've had very good experiences, and that was definitely top three. Wow. You know, having a baby was one. Yes. Um, yeah, you did you that know. well, too. Yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wasn't there, but he's a great kid. Um, <laughs> you can download it on my bio. <laughs> uh, and I'm assuming you're going to have some crazy costumes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. A lot of colors. Yes. Yeah. Mitchell Travers took very good care of it. And it's and I assume Carnival del Barrio is in the movie. You filmed that. I hope so. You I mean, it. you know, okay. I, I think that they're in the process. See, that's the thing. When you make a film, yeah. um, very you know, you're process. out of control. Right. It's not like you know, I, you do the best job you can, pray for the best and hope that they don't cut you, you right. know? Right. Like Dolores. <laughs> <laughs> She'll uh -huh. cut you. Yeah. You know, and and yes. so how are you do you feel more a Broadway? So can I just tell you yeah, that you I, tell me I made so so well, I mean, speaking of cutting, um you, like no, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> That's not funny. I shouldn't say that anyway. Um, uh, I'm joking, people. I <laughs> now I'm totally lost. <laughs> Speaking of cutting, yes. Dasha Polanco, oh. she's not a cutter, she's but I, the new I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like um, now, I've just given it away. I um, yeah. No, we have a nice exchange. Oh, we have a lovely exchange. 
it, on so, the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now I just totally gave it away. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of cutting. <laughs> She's fantastic. <laughs> and she is not cut. Oh, yeah. 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 Do you feel, because you are a Tony nominator, do you feel, which is why it's very fancy. I feel um, like a Tony. Do you feel more Broadway than ever? Like, because you see, you see everything. I do see because everything. Because you have to see everything. I do. So I you're almost like one of us here at Broadway.com. I'm you're almost like, like one like, of you. <laughs> I'll never really, truly <laughs> be like one of you. Let's just make that clear. So is that, what's that, what's that <laughs> like? Do, do you feel it's very, you, do, does it almost make you understand things more about the industry in a weird way to have oh, yeah. such a large sort of view on it absolutely because as actors you can sometimes be very sort of sort of specific in your it's own myopic path. It's, yeah, yeah my my experience my trajectory has been very specific and um yeah and so this is a a whole new world yeah <laughs> no it's um it's <laughs> it's um it's extremely educational yeah. it feels um yeah, it's very rounding mm -hmm. to to see sort of how how the sausage is made. Yeah, right. I <laughs> mean, it's you know made. how the drama is made, yeah. and yeah, like how what it takes all the integral parts. Yeah, you know the politics of it, and uh -huh. the um, and then the craft, and how one you know how they jockey for position. Mm. You know, so, so for somebody like me who is you know talent, you mm -hmm. know. Um, it's really wonderful to see, yeah. to see. And I can also tell, like, you know, I stand up before other people. I mean, I don't always stand up. Um, and I don't, um, I try not to be pretentious. But I honor and, and appreciate the yes. performances and everyone's showing up because that's what we do. Mm -hmm. And so, especially for my homies and people that I think are good, even if I don't know them, I'll stand up. Even if it's not the end, when you're I've supposed actually, to all sort of stand up the protocol of theater, I'm always like, you know, can I? Can well, I there's curse this interesting here? thing. People talk about how <laughs> standing ovations are just a given. Everyone stands for every show. That's but not what, true. But what doesn't happen is they they may all stand at the very end, it's but the, it's very rare that you actually. I found myself leading standing ovations a few times recently. Do you where, feel like where, a pendable? Because I stand for a, a performer I'm really passionate. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> I said, do you feel like a pendejo? <laughs> no, I, I'm very... <laughs> I do know what that means. Pendejo has a very deep etymology, but basically uh, like, you know, jackass, right? It's like, okay, No, I, I'm, I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it I because have. I don't care if other people like what I'm liking. Yeah. So I, I, I like to just sort of... And they, they usually then all Come jump on, up. Come on, bring it in. Yes. But, but like, <laughs> and, and yeah, and I actually remember specifically seeing you jump up at Rose Tattoo. Yeah. And well, so did I. But yeah. it's like, you know, it's so interesting. So sometimes, <laughs> gee, yeah, just get up when you actually feel the passion, not when everyone's supposed to get up. It's not church. Like this is the part where but everybody stands. But it is kind of church, though. Yeah, but you, right? you can't just like randomly stand up in church when you're feeling it. <laughs> I've seen some people randomly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, some churches. Theater is like not the church sit I down. This in. is not about you. It's about me right here. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> just sit down and don't like. But I yeah. um, I so feel power empowered. Like there, it it is like church. Yeah. So, but you know, you're talking to someone that doesn't really go to church right. so much. <laughs> Same. So theater, theater. <laughs> Is, it's all memories. Yeah, theater is church. <laughs> I'll dip into a church every so often because the architecture. Dip in. And I love that you dip in. I do. I, I think <laughs> that churches are for <laughs> dipping into. <laughs> like, well, I feel good that you're on the nominating committee. It makes me feel good to know people I trust are on the committee. Someone who dips into churches um, <laughs> is, is a nominator. Yes. Be very afraid. Hey, Caitlin. Yes. Speaking of cutting, what are people online saying? <laughs> yes, we have a lot of questions. We have a lot of uh, a lot of people actually want to know what is the difference like for you acting in a podcast versus acting on stage, and what is that? How do you kind of get in that mindset because you're in a booth to a microphone acting, but speaking? And I, I first off, I don't have to worry about what I look like, so that cuts off um, a certain um, aspect of vanity, mm. which uh, is refreshing. Um, it just sort of, you know, sort of focuses into sound. I yeah. mean, that sounds so basic, but yeah, it's, I love working with my voice. I feel comfortable there, so um, I get to play. And yeah, it's, it's fun to create a world that way. I love, like, 
you know, listening to stories while I'm on the, um, you know, driving. When I was little, we used to like read stories. So it's kind of like that, you know. I love that. She also started in recording booths and pajama party, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I have experience. I like recording booths. They're kind of, you know, cocoonish, womb-like. Yeah. You know, you get to sort of create a reality. Yeah. Now. <laughs> Yeah. Amazing. So Shannon wants to know what is the actual recording process like? Do you do it all in like one week or do you do it go in once a week? Like how many how often are you in the studio and then the break before people get to listen to it? Okay. So hey Shannon, I think well what happened this time was um uh when we got the first chance that we got Recording it piecemeal, like, you know, sort of a nine to five, except, you know, it's like a, you know, 10 o'clock, we record till three o'clock. Um, usually we have what's slated for the day. Sometimes I'm with a, the other actor. Sometimes the actor is on a location and we're away from each other. So we, we do it separately. Um, yeah, and do just like piecemeal, like maybe one episode a day. Um, I started with narrations first, and then my voiceovers in the scene with other actors. That's one way to do it. Um, and we just do it until it's done. So when you actually heard, like you said, hearing, hearing a final episode, that might be your first time hearing yourself play, underplay with somebody that you weren't in, in the recording studio with, with which is kind of fun. Yeah, 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 with all the elements together, you know, music. Yeah. Music yeah. is so important. Yeah, and Foley, you know, the sound of yeah. unwrapping of ramen noodles. Right, right, right. <laughs> stabbing people. <laughs> yes, I love that. All right, so Michael wants to know, what is your favorite, like, spooky thing? Because this show is very scary and spooky. Did it ever spook you out while reading it and doing it? Or you just, like, love being in that world? Well, I'm familiar with the role. I love mm -hmm. spooky yeah. feelings. I love horror. You know, I'm huge, like... You know, when I saw Get Out, I was like, my head exploded. I was like, yeah, this is my wheelhouse. You know, it was so my wheelhouse. Um, I'm that guy. Um, I like to look at things over and over and pick up uh, clues. So, yeah, uh, but, but no, Dolores... <laughs> I'm completely comfortable with Dolores. She doesn't scare me at all. Yeah, you can now, do I don't want to be alone, you know, in the house up in the country with no one like 20 acres, you know, in a, yeah. per, you know, I, I don't want to. I mean, I would dare myself and listen to me in the podcast because I'm a, you know, I would use my intellect and, um, and it's not the subway. But now, yeah, I, I have a certain discernment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazing. We can do one more question. Mm -hmm. And Shana wants to know if you could have told yourself all those years ago when you first started doing the play that would have turned into all of this and you could be able to do Dolores for this long, what would you would you ever have thought this would have happened? Um I'd have been like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic, you know? Like I mean, I'm a Rocky Horror alum, so dream it, be it, you know. Is that uh, reunion happening next year? Who? Where? I want when? a reunion. 20 year anniversary. Of what? Of Rocky Horror. On Broadway? Yeah, that's On the Broadway? It. Yeah, 20 years. I don't know. <laughs> Make some saying. phone I'll, calls. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Jordan again. <laughs> yes. I think we can pull out a bustier somewhere. <laughs> yes. He definitely, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that would be fun. What a blast. But yeah, I'm lucky. I. I get to but, do things that I love. But I, I do know that you reacted to Aaron's talent. You, you told me that before, that like when he first came to you, you definitely knew this was something cool. Yeah, I wanted to, you know, write my own stuff and have him sort of do my bidding and help me further my project. And I really got distracted with the thing that he wrote mm. and thought like, oh my God, I have to do this. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, it's a lot of fun going on a journey with, with Dolores. She... She is very um, exciting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so how do we find her? It's produced by Gimlet, which is, yes. which is one of the big uh, podcast and companies. So you Gimlet, can download it Spotify. Anywhere. Yeah, it's owned by Spotify, right? Yes, yeah, so Spotify, you it's can... It's the place, that's sort of the place to go. 
Yeah, and if you follow me on Instagram, it's like <laughs> on my bio. Well, you have to follow Link Dr. Rebecca everywhere. It's link in bio. You know, this like I just learned what a link in bio is. I thought link in bio was like a person's name. Lincoln <laughs> Hello, Lincoln. Lincoln bio. <laughs> Related to Scott. <laughs> I swear. I was like, oh, okay, link in bio. So, yeah, you could link in bio. And <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. But, yeah, follow Daphne Ruben Vega everywhere you can. I would follow you anywhere, <laughs> as you know. Thank you for coming in. Good. Thank you for getting through the traffic, which is honestly the biggest horror of all. <laughs> Everyone check out the horror of Dolores Roach on Spotify. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you take us uh, out? Yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at five every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us anywhere you listen to podcasts. I literally <laughs> breathed in the wrong tube. All right. You can listen to us where we get podcasts by searching for hashtag live at five and hitting that subscribe button. And be sure to tune in tomorrow when you continue to talk to more of your Broadway favorites.